So every one of us needs that because every one of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? Yes. Amen. So I want to give you a new definition for grace. We've looked at the, what the Greek interpretation would be. Grace is the power of God which cooperates with the will of man for the eradication of all sinful tendencies. I'm going to read it again. Grace is the power of God which cooperates with the will of man for the eradication of all sinful tendencies. Don't you think that fits where God is bringing His divine influence, His miraculous power into our lives, into our heart, into our mind, and that we would reflect that to the world in our life. You see, the whole idea is to get ready to go home, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of funerals. Yes. Yeah. I've got a member in the church that's at home that is just going on hospice. He's had a heart attack. He's fighting COVID. And right now he's not responding. I'm tired of funerals. I'm tired of the pains and the hurt. I'm tired of the sin in this world. I long to go home, but Jesus needs to fit us for heaven. But my dear friends, he doesn't want to just fit you for heaven. He wants to fit who? The world. Come back to my brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, there's a text in Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23. It says, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopards his spots? Then may ye also do good, which are custom to do an evil. We're born in a sinful world, aren't we? Our propensities are bent that way. But I'm going to tell you what, with the help of Jesus, we can be different. We don't have to be like we have been. He can... We can be transformed, as Paul says, by the renewing of our mind. That we may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. We need to help people to realize that God is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. And I believe it's nearer than we think. I, I, you know, we, we go through day by day and week by week and month by month and pretty soon we're at the end of the year and we start a new one and we go week by week and month by month until the year is gone again. But at some point in time, Jesus is going to stand up and say it's finished. Ready or not, here I come. I want to be ready. How about you? Take your Bibles with me to Hebrews. A little bit to the right. One of Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. I want to bring you to another scripture you're probably very familiar with. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. The Bible says, Let us therefore come what? Boldly unto the throne of grace. grace. Now this is the same exact Greek word that we've been looking at in grace. Which means what? The, div the divine influence upon the heart and its reflection on the life. So notice he says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may have turned, obtain mercy and find what? Grace to help in a time of need. Let me tell you, are any of us in need? Every one of us are in need. And every one of us need that miraculous power that will come in and not only get us through the trial, but will transform our life to become more like Jesus so that our lives can reflect His love and His grace to a fallen world. Take you to another one, Romans 5 and verse 20.
Romans 5 and verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more of it. What does that mean? We live in a sin-sick world, don't we? And as bad as things get, God's miraculous power is greater than any sinful tendencies we have. No matter how deep you've gone, no matter, no matter how much trouble you've gotten into, Jesus is the answer. Amen. And Jesus can help you out. His miraculous grace will transform your heart and mind and will help you to become more and more like Him to where your life is reflected that you've been with Jesus. You know, if you plant a kernel of corn in the ground, What's the next thing that happens to it? It dies. What's the next thing that happens? Well, it does come back to life, but that's not the next thing. Well, it comes to life, but it doesn't come out of the ground. Roots go down. That's why you find that a, a farmer planting a field of corn doesn't go out three days later, rip it up, and replant it. Because he knows that he plants the seed, it's got to die, it's got to germinate, it's got to plant roots, and the stronger the root system, the more it will endure once it goes up. You get a weak root system, your stock may not handle the winds of strife. And so you began to look at the... And that's why Jesus uses agriculture. And he used the parable of the seed. And he tells them that unless it goes in and dies, it will not bring forth fruit. But we also need to understand that when a person gives their life to Jesus, you may not see the result right away. But that doesn't mean the miraculous power of God is not working in their heart and in their mind. But I can promise you eventually, you will see the fruit in your life. Because God is working in your life. Now I have to ask you a question. How do you get that grace? And how do you keep it? Well, number one, you've got to ask for it. Amen. Ask and you shall receive. But number two is you have to study. I, I call it power time. And I refer to it that if you've got no, no, no power, no time with God, you've got no power. you got a little time with God, you got a little power. you have much time with God, you have much power. Power for victory. Power for transformation. And power to become the witness that Jesus is calling you to be. So if you want that grace, that miraculous grace that God so freely wants to give you, you've got to spend time with Him every day. And I want to encourage you that in your first moments of every day, I'll be with Jesus. Spend time in prayer. Spend time studying His Word. And I can promise you, as you begin to study, you'll get to know Him more and more and more. And your power time will grow and grow and grow. And your life will begin to reflect that you have been with Jesus. But you know our lives get busy, don't they? I remember one time, the guy that trained me, his name was Dan Collins, and he developed an, an issue with his liver. He turned jaundice. He drove down to, I think it was Oklahoma, and saw his doctor. And the doctor says, man, I, the only thing I know what to do is to give you this medicine. If that doesn't work, there's probably nothing we can do. So he gave him a prescription, he went and got a field, and he started taking the medicine, and it wasn't but a couple of days, he began to feel a little better. So he threw the pills away. Well, it wasn't a, but a few other days later, <coughs> excuse me, that he would start feeling bad again. He went back to see his doctor, and his doctor says, I, other than that prescription, I don't really know what else to do for you. He said, you did take all the medicine, right? He said, well, no, I didn't take it all. I just took a few until I started feeling better and I threw it away. No. The doctor said, no. You can't do that. 
You need to take all of the medicine all the way through till, till it's gone. So he gives him a new prescription. And this time, Dan took it. And it helped. And he got out of that situation. But my dear friends, so many times we're like that. We, we begin to harbor in with Jesus. But then we let our sail up and we begin to sail off for a little bit. We get busy. And my dear friends, don't ever let Jesus down by letting this world crowd out your time with him. Amen. I'm telling you, it's easy to do. Even as preachers, it's easy to do. So much church work to do. But I can tell you that when you do that, you suffer. Because it's hard to impart what you haven't received. Amen? Amen. So something that is very important that we need to understand that God is longing for us to do His work. He's looking for His church to exemplify His mission, which was what? Seek and save the lost. This comes from Ministry of Healing, page 428. Our condition through sin is unnatural, and the power that restores us must be supernatural. Else it would have no value. There is but one power that can break the hold of evil from the hearts of men, and that is the power of God in Jesus Christ. Only through the blood of the crucified one is there cleansing from sin. His grace alone can enable us to resist and subdue the tendencies of our fallen nature. Amen. Oh, my friends, our only hope is Jesus. Yeah. But I can promise you this, when you surrender your heart to Jesus, and you decide you're going to live for Him, and you spend time with Him every day, it will automatically be reflected in how you talk, in where you go, who you hang around, mm -hmm. what your entertainment is. Mm -hmm. You will reflect Jesus more and more. I want to go to one more scripture here before we close. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. the story of Paul when he was buffeted by Satan. And notice, notice here. I'm going to start in verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord how many times? Three. Three times, thrice. That it might depart from me. How many of you prayed when things have come upon you that they go away? Did you ever stop and think that maybe the Lord's allowed you to go through it for your growth? Amen. And it may be, just maybe, He needs you to keep on your knees so He can save you. So notice Amen. we go on. Amen. Verse 9. And he said unto me, My, what? Grace. grace is sufficient for thee. That word grace is the same word we've been looking at, which means what? Well, that's dunamis. Grace is that divine influence on the heart and its reflection in the life. So he's saying, listen, my, my grace my divine influence on your life is sufficient. Why? Notice, he goes on. For my strength, guess what that word strength is in the Greek? It's dunamis. My strength, my miraculous power is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power Guess what that word is? Dunamis. What does that mean? Miraculous. miraculous power. That the power of God, the miraculous power of Christ may rest upon me. What's he saying? He's saying, listen, I'd rather go through the trials. It's kind of like the three Hebrews. I'd rather be in the fire with Jesus than outside without him. Amen. And I can tell you what, 
If you think you've gone through the trials, hang on. They're not going to get better. They're going to get worse. Just read the book of Revelation. But it's okay. Listen, those are all things that have to happen for Jesus to come. And I want Him to come. Amen? Amen. But I want Him to come to where I'm ready to look up in the clouds and say, Lo, this is my God. I have waited for Him, and He will save me. Amen. How about you? Amen. If you're desired to be ready when Jesus comes, I want to invite you to stand with me right now. Lord, your kind Heavenly Father, we're about to embark upon a new year. Let it not be the same old, same old. Let it not be just like every other year. Lord, let us not be so focused upon ailments, tragedies, disasters, while well, they all sat in our heart. You foretold that that would happen. Lord, I'm asking for every one of us here that you will supply that grace, that divine influence, that miraculous power that comes into our lives so that we might exemplify that in our lives. And that, Lord, people will know that we have been with Jesus. Lord, we want to be ready for you to come. So Lord, we look for that day and we want to hasten that day by being your witness to this lost and dark world. We love you so much. Bless us now. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen. I'd like to invite you to take your hymnals and turn to our closing hymn, hymn number 125, Joy to the World.
And then what I'd like us to do is I'd like us to spend the next two to three minutes meditating and praying about what we've heard today. About what gift of grace God wants you to have. And how He wants you to reflect that to others around. And I hope your prayer is, Lord, not only do I want it, I need you to come into me and, and, and I need to surrender. And if there's anything in your heart that He tugs at your heart at, give it to you. Amen. So that you can take and allow Him to work that power in your life that others will know that you've been with Jesus. Amen. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we do want to reflect you. As a church, as individuals, Lord, we want to get others ready for you to come. But Lord, you're trying to get us ready. So Lord, as we begin this new year, we begin it wanting you to come into our hearts with that divine influence, that miraculous power. That Lord, it won't just stay there bubble over and help us to reach out to others. So as we spend this time in meditation and prayer, I'd like to ask you, speak to our hearts that Lord, whatever we have, we'll give to you. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to invite you to, to be seated. I'm going to invite our organist and pianist to play 287 as softly and tenderly just softly slowly not wanting to sing with it just wanting us to have some meditative music 